Now then, hello everybody. I want to read a little poem and then have a listen to something else. But uh, before that, let me show you this here. This is Buddha. And uh, there's Buddha now. He's been meditating so much. His head is so enlightened. That there's a big flame in his heart, but his head is gone. Isn't that amazing? There you are now. Jesus was an arrow of Avalon. Baby body born in Bethlehem. Boy bought up in Britain. Druids trained him. Hebrews blamed him. In Israel, his love was smitten. From the Keltoi, Mac Isaac took aim. The first rule of becoming the Christ, it's not a sin till you do it twice. Creating enchantment with stories he'd tell. About mustard seeds and mansions, and the woman and the well. Causing confusion, druid magi call illusion, Of death most tragic, Christ's secret magic. Noble myth made manifest, Christ child fulfilment of grail quest, Successful exodus to the west, To promise lands we know as blessed, to put the Antichrist to the test. Two thousand years have now gone past. The end of time has come at last. And now life's river is running fast. Forced into futures flow from past. Now we've seen the Lord of the Rings. The fall of false thrones of false queens and false kings. For fall of false Rome in joy we sing. Return of the fairies, return of the king. Remember the truth of who we are. We come from above with love from the stars. We live on the streets. We drink in bars. Walked off our feet. Driven mad in cars. Weird souls on retreat. We are the Bodhisattvas. In disguise. A lost at love people. All drunk and on drugs. Suffering oppression. Take comfort in hugs. Distrust of the government rules over our lives. Hiding from Big Brother. Paranoid of spies. Seek the truth of eternal life. You can see it in our eyes. Watch news information. Believe in white lies. But the beast will always be tied down no matter how he tries. When Christ's return, the beast will burn. True king is restored to the crown. When the truth be shown, true peace be known. A paradise thrown, paradise grown. Heaven made home on earth. That's a little thing there now from the ancient days. And this is someone else saying things in other ways. For the simple reason is that it continues today. The same lie machinery is in work today. It's still being propagated today. This is why we need to be very, very astute when we read uh, newspapers and magazines and, and, and uh, accounts of history and what uh, people's beliefs are. There's an Orwellian lie machinery at work. John O'Mahony, in his book The History of Ireland, says that against no class of her people did the English law rage with more violence than against the Bards and the Shenachis, and none were hunted down more relentlessly by the bloodhound Myrmidians of our tyrants. In fact, it was necessary for the perpetration of their wholesale plunder and for the imposition of feudal landlordism in the place of the tribe's ownership of the Gales, that the members of the free clans could not be reminded of their pedigree recited by the professional historians. For this purpose, they did seek, and do still seek, to demoralize and brutalize our noble race. So what he's saying here is that the uh, bards, who were an integral part of the Druidic order, were mercilessly hunted down and destroyed. The bards were the keepers of the records. They were the keepers of the lineage. They knew about the uh, racial heritage of the kings and the chieftains. Um, so if you were some chieftain or prince or duke, and you wanted to know about your family and you needed a refresher or a reminder of who exactly 
your family was, how far back in time it went, uh, what other you know, cousins and uh, related dynasties throughout the world may have been involved with your family, and all of this kind of thing that we take for granted today. Well, they didn't have computer programs, and they didn't have genealogists in the sense that we have today. They call in the bards who had mentally uh, remembered all of this, who were experts in this. So, of course, when the colonialists came in, when the invaders came in, they absolutely uh, targeted the bards. And today we have this romantic idea of what the bards were, and they were harpists, and they were these sort of uh, uh, soothsayers and poets. But they also had a tremendous political function. And so they were sought out, and within just a few years, a very short period of time, they were annihilated. This is the kind of thing that I want to talk about this subject. I'm sick and tired of opening books and finding that the destruction, the wholesale genocide of the Irish uh, elite, some of the most spiritual men who have ever walked the planet, is nothing, deserves nothing more than a few lines, a paragraph, and then turn the page around to something else. James Bonwick, in Irish Druids and Old Irish Religions, published in 1894, or 18, uh, yeah, 1894, says that the Statutes of Kilkenny, which were put in place by Edward III, made it penal to entertain any Irish bard. But Munster bards continued to hold their annual sessions to an early part of the last century. Carolyn, the old blind harper, last, uh, he was called last of the bards, he died in about 1738. We were talking about a campaign of uh, genocide and, and annihilation and cannibalization and plagiarism and suppression. We're talking 18th century here. Well, wait a minute. First, we were talking about 600 BC. This thing is very long in the making. We have the Milesians, Atonists coming, and it's these people's descendants who would, of course, been by that time religiously Christian after AD 33, whatever. So we're talking about a wholesale campaign. It uh, takes a long time to suppress a people, especially those as ardent as the, 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 the uh, ancient Irish. And sometimes when you hear the term being used Celtic or you hear Gaelic, sometimes uh, scholars use those uh, wrongly because the Gaels are officially the Milesians. They're officially the oppressors. We're identifying these people and their descendants as the oppressors of the original megalithic Irish. So when you're looking into the timelines and when you're looking into the chronology, when you're looking into the uh, identity of these different uh, Irish groups, whether it's the Caledonians or the Belgae, you see, or the Britons, or, or the Gaels or the Celts, one has to sort of uh, get a profile on who we're talking about here. And that's what the books go into. Volume 1 will clearly profile, as best as we can anyway, who these people were. And if you're up on this subject and you've tracked it long enough, you'll find out that very few of these uh, so-called Celtic scholars you know, can find a consensus. Every few years, they're changing their definition of what a Celt is, or where the Celts lived, or where the Celts stayed, or what kind of blood type they had, or what kind of language they spoke. So it appears to be a welter of information. Now, St. Patrick burned whole libraries upon his arrival in Ireland. He was an agent, like St. Columba, sent to eliminate the Druids, so that few would trace the origins of the world's educators. We saw in the last slide also that the eradication had also intentionality behind it, meaning that as long as the pure, pristine, unadulterated church or college of the Druids and the Bards, the Shanachis, the minstrels, as long as that existed, there was no chance for the other thing, that other monstrosity out of Egypt out of Atonism, out of Rome, there's no chance of that ever getting seeded and rooted. So the order of business was to eradicate everything that was there before. Not eradicate it so much that you couldn't plagiarize it, but as I said, that, uh, that uh, campaign of plagiarization and of appropriation is not done overnight. It actually takes hundreds of years to do that, to sift through uh, the plunder, to arrange it, and to finally hybridize it repackage it and make it your own. So we're talking in the region of about 600 years here, 600 to 1,000 years. But the main thing is that no matter how long it takes, it has to happen. You have to eradicate the unadulterated form first. You have to wipe away all traces.